Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company. Plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now, let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. All right. Hello, home service pros. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 119. Today, we're going to talk about how to use AI or artificial intelligence and the new open AI tool called ChatGPT to help your service business. So ChatGPT3 has been a hot topic of the last few weeks, especially in the digital marketing and SEO worlds. Back in episode number 50, we talked about the new AI writing tools like uh, Jasper and how they can help content writers get their work done faster and with more ease. We were and still are super excited about what these tools can do for a small business. But now ChatGPT3 has entered the ring and it's taken the world by storm. You probably have heard about it in the last couple of weeks. And over a million registrations, I believe. So let's talk about what it is, where it's going, and how it can impact and help your local service business. Okay, so ChatGPT3 is a new natural language AI chatbot. It's been launched by the developers over at OpenAI. This is the same team that recently brought us DAL E2, D A L L E 2 which is an AI system that generates realistic images based on a text description that you provide it. Right? So you got DALI 2 and ChatGPT 3. You got to love these Star Wars movie names, right? So ChatGPT 3, again, is an open dialogue natural language chatbot with a wide range of applications. Microsoft itself has already invested over a billion dollars in it and is said to be uh, now to be ready, willing, and able to invest another $10 billion, and they're going to add it to their Bing search engine, as well as their Azure tools. Right? So Google, of course, certainly taking notice. They're working on their own AI chat natural language system called Lambda, and now everyone is taking notice in the marketing and SEO worlds, and many other worlds content, coding, etc. So we're not going to go into everything that ChatGPT3 does and can do or how it can be used. It's enormous. Instead, we're just going to focus on what it can do for your local service business, right? So let's talk about what it is and what it does. So again, you've heard me say already, it's a natural language processing model that takes your written questions, requests, prompts, and then answers them. Right? It can understand human language as it's written or spoken. And in many ways, it's actually better than Google for simple question answer type kind of queries. Since it's a chatbot, it retains the info you last asked it. So you can communicate with it in a conversational like manner. You can ask it for more details after it answers your first query. You can ask it for more details to expand, expand on the topic or to narrow the topic, etc. You can keep communicating on the same topic. And the results it generates can truly be amazing. Right? So where it can help your local business is in content creation. Right? You can ask ChatGPT3 to, I'll, I'm going to name out 11 things that we use these kind of tools for and that you can use ChatGPT3 for. So you can ask it to provide the top 10 questions people ask about your industry, top 10 questions people ask plumbers, electricians, roofers, or about a topic, tankless water heaters, clay shingles, or clay tile, etc. All right, so give me the top 10 questions people ask about an industry or a topic. Number two, provide a blog outline for an article on whatever the topic is. Top 10 reasons to get a tankless water heater, for instance. Number three, you can ask it to write a promotional email, right? And an example for a plumber to send to existing customers 
recommending an annual plumbing inspection. Number four, you can ask it to write a video outline, right? For an example, for a plumber to talk about the pros and cons of a tankless water heater. Number five, you can ask it to write a catchy search engine title for a blog article. You can ask it to, uh, number six, you can ask it to write catchy meta descriptions. For example, for a plumber's sewer line repair service page, give me the meta description and a catchy clickbait title. Number seven, give me 10 blog post ideas for blank. Right? Number eight, generate a list of ideal keywords for a, example, plumber in Ojai, California. Now, I would be careful there, especially with keywords. Right? So use another tool to confirm that those keywords have any traffic. Okay. Number nine, generate a blog outline of an article based on this keyword. Give it a keyword. Number 10, generate the schema markup for, and then you would give it content, a business information, a blog article, a service page, a product page, etc. Right? I don't highly recommend that one unless you're not using schema right now. Again, we recommend the Schema Pro app, schemaapp.com, I believe. That is, in our humble opinion, the only way to write schema markup to your page because it's all-encompassing, has every fact, every aspect of schema, every possible schema markup that could be written is within the tool. It's updated daily, so on and so forth. Okay, so be careful on schema markup there as well. And number 11, you can ask it to generate review responses for your company, right? So you can give them, generate a review response for XYZ company to respond to this review from Jane Smith and give the review, right? So these are just a few of the capabilities that are truly incredible for this, these software tools and a game changer for businesses, right? You or your competitors are going to jump on this and start creating content at mass scale. And that will eventually leave you in the dust on search engine rankings, potentially, right? Now, um, before you go getting all excited about using this tool to do all of the writing for you, uh, let me warn you against doing that for several reasons, right? So can it? Yes. All these AI content tools can write out the entire article for you. Do you want to use that? That's a big hell no, right? And the number one reason is posting website content that is 100% AI generated is against Google's webmaster guidelines. So Google finds you're doing that, you will lose your rankings, disappear from search, perhaps altogether, and that will certainly impact your business in a negative way. There are tools out there also. So when Google itself is creating similar kind of conversational chat, natural language AI software. So you better believe that they have, you could safely assume that they have the means to detect 100% AI generated content, right? So don't do that. You write with the software not let the software write entirely for you, right? There are, there's another tool out there called, it's the previous generation, but GPT-2 Output Detector. GPT-2 Output Detector. And you can put a piece of content in there, hit go, and it will tell you if it believes that the content is 100% generated by AI. Now, I can tell you that we've tested these tools and sometimes the output detector will take what was written completely by humans and believe it was made by AI, right? So the AI is at its embryonic stage, and so too are the tools detecting it. So you can play with fire if you want and think that it's going to be a while before Google can really detect AI content. I would not go down that road. And again, that's 100% AI-generated content, right? So. A better way to do it is have AI lay out your layout, your topical layout, your article, your content brief, headings, subheadings, keywords to include, so on and so forth, and then have your writers write from there. 
right? And now you have a mixture of the two. It will be impossible to detect for Google, right? So be careful how you tread there. In addition, you don't want to just use and accept the content that this tool spits out because it's got its own limitations. It's not without flaws, right? So the number one problem is it, it's got limited information. It was fed information, massive quantities of information, but only up until September of 2021. So it has zero knowledge of anything that occurred, invented, transpired, or whatever, after September of 2021. Okay? So I'll have no knowledge of that. And while it was fed a monstrous 570 gigabytes of information, equaling some 300 billion words, that's still limited information in the world. Right? So the system works on probability, mathematics, way beyond my capability to understand. But that's what it's working on, probability. Right? So can and does generate incorrect information. And it can and does misunderstand what you're asking it. Also a problem with it is it will generate content that includes biases, stereotypes, jokes, and opinions. They'll all be in a piece of content that spits out because the data that it was fed had contained those. Right? So on some topics, you're going to see those things surface up. Right? So you do not want to rely on it to generate 100% of your written content. You definitely want to check all the facts and data that it spits out. Make sure any of that is correct. So if you don't do that, that'll backfire you, are you in the long run uh, from lost Google rankings and readers. You know, readers come and read your content, and if it's crap, it's not factual, it's got errors, poorly written, it's got joke, bad jokes, bad opinions, bad biases, you're going to be losing people. Right? You don't want to be 100% lazy and let it write 100% of your content. Use it as a guided tool, right? And it is an awesome tool to generate content ideas and outlines and save your SEO and your content teams a lot of time and work as it does for us. So uh, Chat GPT-3 is currently a free tool, but after over a million user registrations in just the last couple of weeks, I see that OpenAI has closed the app to new users, so you can't get in now. And I have little doubt that when it opens, you'll have to pay to use it, right? It won't be free anymore. Of course, it's not the only AI writing assistant out there either, so you'll have to measure its price against others, right? Now, we've been using a tool called Jasper for nearly a year or so now, and man, uh, you could not pay us probably at all to, uh, to give it up. Almost, almost <laughs> no amount of money. We love that program, and we use it for all our projects that were mentioned above, Except for writing schema, we don't use that. It does. It can't do that, and it can't write computer code. I didn't even get into that. Chat GPT three can even write computer code, but few of you need that, so we're not even top on that. So again, a list of uses that we use Jarvis or now Jasper got renamed as Jasper. We use Jasper for, and then Chat GPT three will play a role in these also. We've even had some comparisons written by both tools on the same type of subject, and we, we still kind of prefer Jasper. Chat GPT-3 is a good Q&A. Like, if you need a good answer quickly, then it's a good tool for that. It's a great tool for these outlines, like we said. So again, the uses are content ideas, content outlines, review responses, promotional email content, Video outlines, YouTube descriptions, page and post titles, meta descriptions, for writing ad headlines and copy, for video sales letter outlines, cold email content, and press release outlines, right? So we currently use Jasper for all that and starting to use ChatGPT3, starting to test it for all of those as well to see which we like or do we want both tools 
combining the spin out a content brief or something and then off to the writer, so on and so forth. So we're testing them all out. All right, so it's definitely an awesome tool. That or something like Jasper could certainly help your team, your blog writing team, your SEO team out there, create more content, more in depth, and do it quicker. All right, I hope that helps some of you. Thanks for sharing your time with us today. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast so you get notified of future episodes. Feel free to share this one on your social channels. We'll see you in the next episode. Good luck out there and create a great day. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit Battle Plan Marketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.